Well, your philosophy is to give your team a chance to succeed. They're in there. Tell me about that. Well, we, you know, we do want to give them a chance to succeed. We're trying to really zero in on what it is we have to do offensively and defensively. Uh, some things have worked, some things haven't, but nothing has worked well enough for us to hang our hat on yet. So we really have got to keep working this thing and uh, really get to work. Thanks a lot, Coach. Back up to you guys. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks to Coach McWhorter. His team trails at 12-8. Coming up, it's the second half. You're listening, or rather, you're watching high school football here on GPB. Second half action, getting ready to kick off here. Laney's got the lead, and they will kick it off to Charlton County. 12 to 8 is our score. Wildcats fell behind early, but put up two touchdowns unanswered. And here's the kickoff. Sap puts the foot to it. It's going to be high and short. And Williams hauls it in at the 22 yard line. He gets across the 25, but can't step through the tackle. And they'll bring him down after a return of about five yards to the 27. Timmy Wright, the one that brought him down. There you see the coaches, and uh, we talked to both of them at the half. And uh, obviously, Eric Parker in a little bit better mood than Rich McWhorter. Yeah, but you know, they both went in at halftime. They made the adjustments that they need to make. And really, it's on the team now, man. The coach can only coach so much. Right now, it just becomes a heart issue for the, uh, the individual players. And there you see the numbers on Dasher. Not good. Completing only 20% of his passes, a couple of picks. Here's a big play, though. Into the secondary, Rumbles Lemuel Walker. The sophomore tackled by Israel McKay, but he gets out across the 45 to the 48 yard line. That's a first down for the Indians here. Big play to start the second half for them. Give credit up front to the big nasties opening up the hole and Walker with the speed. Unbelievable. What a great back he is. He stays in the eye formation. 80 yards for Walker already here as we start the third quarter. He'll get the call again. He's in Delaney territory. Short gain this time before he stood up by Corey Irvin and Johnny Overstreet. He'll pick up, let's see where they mark it, about four yards. It'll be second and six. You know, Dave, they come right out, you know, at the beginning of the second half. And this is going to be more like a, a schoolyard brawl right now because they're just making contact at the line of scrimmage, and mm -hmm. it's just the baddest man is going to win. Both teams, I'm sure, had fiery halftime speeches from their coaches here as they try to make it to the title game. Makes it a fair back, and again, Walker gets the call. He'll pick up four or five. Not quite enough for his first down. Tackled from behind by Ladarian Redfield. And it will be a third down, and they'll need about two to get a first down. Good job by Charlton just moving the ball down the field, picking up as many yards as you can, running some of that time off the clock. Same set with Taylor the fullback in front of Walker with a tailback, White Dasher under center. And he'll go to Walker again. He's got room on the outside, stumbles ahead for about five yards. And then gathers himself once he makes contact with the secondary, picks up another two or three. First down for the Indians. Wayne Canty, the one that tackled him. It's a great job on that right side of the offensive line. Just sealed it off. And that's all you need a lot of times, man. You know, you think as an offensive lineman, you got to make these big, powerful blocks. But a lot of times, you just want to make contact and just seal off something, give you back something to go for. Walker now at 99 yards for the afternoon. First down. At the 33 yard line. Dasher. There's Williams in motion. They'll pitch it. This one's going to go nowhere. That time, Kenneth Walker in the backfield to make the stop. Loss of three yards on the play. What a great play by Kenneth Walker. Coming off the corner. I mean, he's coming hard. Hello, sir. I'll be with you all afternoon. <laughs> Emil Walker, no chance to get anything done on that play. And it that drops him back down to 96 for the afternoon. Second down and long, second and 13. Two men up top, Milton and Williams. And now the uh, fullback Taylor in a wing slot formation. Williams in motion. Take the pitch and in some trouble. Dances out of it though, lets it fly toward the end zone. And this one may have been picked off. It was. 
There he was again. Robert Dunn making a big play this time on the defensive end. Milton, the intended receiver for Dasher, but double coverage and a turnover again by the Indians. And what a great play by Dasher to be able to get out of the pressure was coming right at him. He was able to escape it, but then once again, Mr. All Everything on the other end of the field, Robert Dunn makes a great interception. Nice catch. That was Overstreet in the backfield disrupting that pass play. Now here comes the Laney offense. Dominique Walker drops back in shotgun formation. He's got three wide outs. He'll give it to Canty. And Wayne, not much on this play. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Adam Davis in the backfield to drop him back at the 16 yard line. Dunn's got a touchdown reception and he's got two interceptions on the defensive side of the ball. So he say he'll tell you he's a big play guy. And he lives up to it. I'm just wondering now, how much of a toll playing both sides of the ball will it have on Dunn later on in the fourth quarter. You got to wonder though but these kids they can run forever these days. Especially in high school football in the playoffs. Here's a pass nearly intercepted. Boy, Devon Whitley right in the passing lane. And if he could have held on to that one, he'd, he'd be standing in the end zone with a Charlton County touchdown. And you know Dominic Walker would like to have that one back. Just looks right at the receiver. Whitley steps in. Great defensive play. Yeah, Chris Thomas running a slant route. But really in there to knock it away. So now it's third down and long, third and 13. Walker breaks the huddle. And again, they spread the field with three wideouts. Shotgun formation. Dominic looking deep down the middle and had his man in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Kenneth Walker, at the 34 yard line. So the Wildcats will have to punt the ball back to the Indians. Not like that. Laney's not getting a lot of good looks here. All kinds of time for Dominique, but the receiver just couldn't pull it in. So Dunn will drop back in punt formation. We saw him fake it before, but that was at midfield. I don't think here at the 14 they're going to do anything cute. Dick is away. And Glover takes it at the 50. Looking for a wall of blockers. Step through the first point of contact and gets inside the 40 near the 35 yard line Saf able to hit him with a nice return and the Indians with excellent field position here on their second possession of the second half. You know Glover reminds me of what we used to call back in the old days a scat back just a small bag but able to just make moves mm -hmm. and just cause you just miss most of the time. That's what he does. And you see that defense is a Stand tall and get the football back for their offense. There's a give to Walker. Puts his head down, breaks a couple of tackles, and gets about five yards before he's turned back. Johnny Overstreet, along with Sapp, had him as well. Walker continuing to pile up the yards. And what a tough kid this is, man. To be able to just look, he just drives out of basically the block. How's dra dragging the uh, defender with him? 5'9", but 185 pounds. So that low center of gravity, he is tough to tackle. All the strength in them legs. Second and five for the Indians. Up to 31. Walker trying to right side, and the tackler slung him forward for an extra three yards. He may have his first down. Israel McCain, the guy, had him around the waist. Let's see where they mark that one. I think he's going to be just shy at about the 27. So with third and one, they quickly break the huddle. We'll try to catch the Wildcats D off guard here. High formation. Two wides. Here's the give, and that'll be enough for a first down. Overstreet tackles Walker, but Vanille with enough for the first down. They'll move the chains again. And good ball control offense by Charlton County. Just uh, hands the ball off. It doesn't look very pretty. You get the first down. What you're doing is you're taking a lot of time off of that clock. Well, the Indians, their fourth appearance here at the Georgia Dome for the playoffs. Here's Walker again. This time cuts it back to the middle inside the 20. Late flag comes in. We may have a face mask 
He picked up about six yards on the carry. Let's see what the penalty is. That's what it is. Somebody got a hand in there for Laney, and that's going to cost him a few yards. There you see the replay. And right in there. Looks like Overstreet. Against the defense. Replay first down. Certainly didn't mean to, but it's five yards. That's how the ball is inside the 15. 12 to 8. Laney on top of Charlton County, but the Indians on the move. Right side, Walker shakes one tackle inside the 10 near the 6. He goes. It'll be first and goal for the Charlton County Indians. Again, Overstreet, the man that made the tackle, Corey Irvin in there as well. Just some good blocking up front. And when you got a great back like this, I mean, all he needs is, is just a small opening. Ball's at the six yard line. First and goal. Indians looking to retake the lead. They scored first, had an eight nothing lead, but Laney answered with two touchdowns. High formation. Walker again, the deep back. Six man front for Laney. Here's the give to Walker, right side. Puts his hand down, dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Charlton County. Lemuel Walker doing all the work on that drive. And gives this team a 14 to 12 lead. And you got to make sure that you're giving the credit up front. That's where it starts at. Look at the blocking. And you're right. He does a lot of it on his own. But that offensive line took a lot of time off that clock just controlling the offense. So Dasher will come on to try the extra point. Last time they had a touchdown. They brought him out to kick and then the penalty took it half the distance. So they decided to go for it. Converted the two pointer. Dasher 23 out of 34 on the season. And kick is away, and it is good. 15 to 12. Charlton County takes the lead here. Six minutes, seven seconds to go in the third quarter. And Laney now finds itself down by three points. Now, the thing that Laney has to do right now is if you're a player, you can't get down because that's the first thing that happens. Take another look at the touchdown. As you give the walker. Just finds him a hole, just goes out and just turns on the speed. Bounces outside, had a nice lead block by Terrence Milton there on the corner. And he gets in the end zone. Five plays, 59 yards. Took a minute, 51 off the uh, clock there. Six yard TD run. Got the fans fired up. Now, they, they see, Dave, this is football, man. This is mm -hmm. what it's all about. You want to just line up and just knock each other in the mouth, man. That's what, that's what it's about. I'm sorry, man. Back and forth football in five plays, 59 yards, five carries, 59 yards for Mr. Lemuel Walker. White Dasher has it up on the tee at the 40, and he'll kick it away. Going to be a low liner. Dunn's going to take it at the 11. Brings it back to the middle of the field, looking for a wall of blockers. And he will not find it. He is knocked out of bounds after just a short return at the 19 yard line. Great coverage by Charlton County getting downfield got off of their blocks had a wall of black shirts. It was nowhere for Mr. Dunn to go but out of bounds. LT Glover the man who knocked him out of bounds. So here comes Dominique Walker getting some play instructions from Coach Parker. And he'll bring his team out. They saw their lead take it away now. 15 to 12 our score first down at their own 19 yard line about halfway through our third quarter wide outs to the near side Dominique going to give it to Canty and Canty's got nowhere to go black shirts there to slow him down Fred Zhao once again in that backfield and a loss of about four yards now forward progress give him a loss of just one. But Zhao, we talked about him leading the team in tackles with 66 and having another big afternoon. And you talk about momentum. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, Charlton County seems to have the momentum right now. And it's up to the Laney players. They got to reach down deep inside, to figure out what they're made of. Second down and 11. Back of the 18 yard line. Walker looking down the middle. And this ball is tipped and nearly intercepted. Like Whitley got a hand on it, and Boatwright nearly had his second interception. 
But that play well covered by the Indians defense. Good protection up front. Looks at the receiver. Trying to go to Sapp again. He's the one that had that 80 yard reception in the first half. I'll tell you Dave eventually you keep throwing that pass. Eventually you're going to connect. Dominic not shy about throwing the football that's for sure. Had some struggles early but connected with Dunn on the touchdown and talked about that play with Sapp. So they've had some success in the second quarter. Here's another deep ball and Sapp the antenna receiver but tipped away. Great defense by Harry Martin who had perfect coverage there at the 50 yard line. And that'll bring up a fourth down for the Wildcats. They'll have to kick it away. And just a great play by Martin coming over from the free safety spot giving up that help. Tremendous athlete. So Dunn will punt it. And back again is LT Glover had a nice return on the last one set his team up and now he's running in the check. Nobody was covering the out man and the ball is partially blocked the kick is and it's going to be great field position for Charlton County. Fred Zhao is the one that blocked it. And the ball is going to be Indian football at the 20 yard line. Well you saw the man on the end was uncovered and so Glover runs over there to get him and next thing you know they put pressure on the punter and it's blocked. And watch Fred Zhao. You know, just, just being in, in the right place at the right time. And so the Indians take over the football at the 20 yard line of Laney. They just scored to take the lead. Now they got it again. And guess who? The Mule Walker. This time a short gain, about three yards. McCain's the one that brought him down. And you want to know how tough Walker is. I mean, he is just taking a pounding and he continues to run right at that Laney front. Yeah. Jeremy Hayes also went on that last stop. Gain of three, second and seven. Here he goes again. The mill around the right side again and again. He picks up some positive yardage. This one's going to be about a four yard gain. It'll bring up a third down. They'll spot the ball at the 14 yard line, it looks like. I mean, Walker's like most good backs. The more he gets the ball, the stronger he seems to get. And they run that right side behind Smith and Morgan. They've been doing that all here in the third quarter. Third down, they need three. This time he goes left tackle, and that is going to be enough for a first down. He's inside the 10. Overstreet tackled him. But Walker. Has given his team a first and goal at the nine yard line. Well, it looks like they decided that that passing game is uh, should be shelved for a while, and it's going to be the Lemuel Walker show from here on out. And you got a lot of double teams going up front, man. It's just great blocking. Walker again steps through one tackle and drives his way toward the five yard line. Give Ladarian Redfield credit for that tackle. But Walker, the workhorse, well over 100 yards now. And these last two Charlton County dri drives have been nothing but him carrying the football. High formation again. Ball is at the six yard line, first or second in goal. This time, well, he steps through some tackles. I thought they had him for a loss, but he kept keep driving those legs and he picks up a couple more. Kenneth Walker dropped him in the secondary but he gets it to the four three and a half. You know Dave a lot of times you don't get a chance to see what really happens in the trenches but I was just watching Frank Allen the center just being able to scoop block being able to get his head in front of the, the nose guard and just kind of just crab and wall him off. Third down now a long three for a touchdown Walker gets it and he is stood up ball comes loose and it's going to be Laney possession. Coming out with it is Israel McCain. Big hit. Ball squirts out. And the Indians are turned away inside the five. And you see a frustrated coach, Rick McWhorter, there. 
His team looking to go up by two scores, could not get it done. Just watch the leg in here. See Walker. Ball comes up. And it looked like it was Jeremy Hayes who got a hat on it and popped it right out. <laughs> Four turnovers by the Indians today. And Laney's got the football. Last time they were down here, they went 80 yards on one play to Curtis Sack. This time they'll run it to Canty. Makes a couple of moves and works his way out across the 10 to about the 13 yard line. Harry Martin in on that stop. 15 to 12, Charlton County on top, Bill. You know, at this point, Laney can decide what they want to do. I mean, they've got the momentum now. They know they can actually run the ball. They can throw it, but they can actually run the ball. Even though as fast as this Charlton County defense is, they keep finding little seams to let the backs get through. You see Walker's numbers, six out of 17. 135 for him, picked off once in the early going, but he does have that touchdown pass to Dunn. Here's the give to the fullback. JT Moss and a flag in on that play late. Moss with a short gain got across the 15 to about the 16. Well, let's see what the penalty is. Officials huddling the will be about a third down and two at the play stands. It looks like they're going to get an automatic first down. Not automatic, but enough yardage to get that first down. Somebody got a hand on a face mask. Five yard face mask against the defense. Five yard penalty. First down. You know, you got the momentum going right now. Take a look at the replay. See if we can see it. Mm. Yeah, that was close. No. Mm -hmm. Looks like he had a hand across his uh, <laughs> face for that. Enough to draw the penalty and enough to get the first down for the Wildcats. They had to go back to Candy on the ground. He'll get five yards going right up the middle. Zal was there to stop him. Along with Adam Davis. Wayne Canty starting to put up a few rushing yards. Here comes Thomas into the game. And Devin Larmon will go out. Dunn splits near side and Thomas up top. High formation again with Canty, the deep man. And the fullback will get it. JT spins out of there. He's going to get enough for a first down, about nine yards for JT Moss, the big senior. JT had over 300 yard rushing, uh, 300 yards rushing this year. 5'8, but 195 pound, another one of those. Stubby fellas, it's tough to bring down when he gets going. And that can mean a long afternoon for Charlton County if they're not careful. Ball now at the 35. First down. Laney down by three points, 15 to 12 here. Great stages of the third quarter. Deep ball. Dunn is there, makes a spectacular catch, but can't hang on. David Pender. And Robert Dunn going up for that football. It looked like Dunn had it for just a second, but he couldn't hang on to it. And it's going to be a second down. All kind of time for Walker. Just stands back and lets it go. Almost a great catch. Great athletic ability. Just can't hang on to it. You get the feeling they throw to Dunn if he had seven guys covering because they have that much confidence in him to bring it in. If I got Dunn out there, I'm throwing to him seven <laughs> times. Second down. At the 35 after the incompletion. Try to run a little option, and this one's going nowhere. Dustin Nobles blows that play up. He brings Walker down back at the 31 yard line, loss of four. And you see Coach McWhorter talking to his quarterback, White Dasher. They plot their next possession. Final 12, 10 seconds here of our third quarter. And I think it's going to run out before we get another playoff. Charlton County with a touchdown, and they have taken the lead here in the third quarter as we go to our final 12 minutes. 15 12, our score. Charlton County leads Laney. It's high school playoff football here on Georgia Public Broadcasting. And we go to our fourth quarter. Charlton County on top of Laney, 15 to 12. Laney's got the football, but their offense has been uh, 
All but not here in the second half, Phil. Dave, nine yards offense. This is not the kind of the team that we talked about at the beginning of the game. We're not seeing what we thought we'd see. I don't know. They, this is the fourth quarter. You put your four fingers up and you say we got to go for it. All right, third down long. Third and third, third and 14 they need. Dominique Walker under some pressure lets it go sideline sack for the intended receiver but it's going to be picked up and back the other way comes Justin Williams gets it inside the 10 yard line second interception thrown by Walker today Boatwright got him early and Williams gets him here late and the Indians in business again Justin Williams saw this developing he just waited and just slid right over Excuse me, I'll take that on my way to the races. Curtis Sapp, the intended receiver, but no chance to catch that football. And Williams has set the Indians up at the 10 yard line. Expect Walker to get the work again. Oh, he is absolutely hammered in the backfield by Corey Irvin. Now, Dave, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Big Corey, all 260 pounds, just laid wood. <laughs> oh, biggest hit of the afternoon. Corey Irvin just blows up Lemuel Walker. Loss of three on the play. Loss of two, excuse me, second and 12. And they run the right side again. Walker this time able to get a little bit, but not much. Irvin was there again. So was Curtis Sapp. He gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. You know, Dave, this is a good test for this Laney defense to see. Now they got to reach down deep inside, see if they can stop him. Being inside the 10 now, it's up to them. Walker having a big afternoon. But his team's facing a third and nine. And a little trickery, nearly intercepted, but a great play. As Dasher creates under duress finds his tight end Patrick Brooks at about the four yard line. Well that ball looked like it might be picked off the second he let it go but. Brooks able to stay in front of the defender haul it in. Walker the one who was on him and there you see the play again. Or checking that was Dunn who hit him. A lot of credit to Dasher too. be able to have a man draped all over you and still get the pass away. So now a fourth down and the Indians are going to try a field goal. Dasher will kick it. Spot's pretty good. Kick is up and away and it's through the post. So it's 18 to 12. The Indians extend their lead to six here with 9.53 to go in the ball game. Dasher with a 22 yard field goal. So the turnover turned into points again. The interception. By Justin Williams. Got the ball at the 10 yard line and the Indians get three points out of it. You know still no time to panic. Not right now. Laney still you got 953 left on the clock. But somehow or another they've got to get some sort of rhythm going. So Dasher who kicked the field goal will uh, tee it up at the 40 yard line. And the dangerous Robert Dunn is back deep along with Wayne Candy and here's Dunn. He'll have the football at the eight. Going the right side again looking for blockers and he is going nowhere. A sea of black brings him down at the 12 yard line to Vaughn Whit uh, Whitley the first to hit him. Charlton County on special teams. You know, a lot of times people don't think about how important special teams play is. You got a dangerous man like Dunn. If he gets outside, he's gone. Dunn took back two kickoffs for touchdowns against GAC, both 85 yards. But that time he only got about five yards on his return. And his team's back at the eight, uh, excuse me, 13 yard line. Trailing it by six now, 18 to 12. Walker sends a receiver out either side. He's got Canny behind him in the eye formation. And Canny gets the football into the secondary. He goes. 
and dives out across the 18 yard line Whitley the one that brought him down by his ankles. They'll put it down at the 19 so give him six yards. Laney just needs to keep the composure. You've got a good back like can just keep you can run the ball here. Get away from that uh, end zone. You see Candy having trouble with his shoe. I don't know if he's going to be able to make it this play. They hold the huddle without him. And now he's ready and we're all set to go. Second down and a short four. Here's the fullback bouncing it off one tackle and moving his feet and getting there first down is JT Moss. Moss has had a few carries here in the second half and made the most of it. Just watching the replay. Moss runs into his own man, moves him out of the way, gets grabbed, still moving his legs, determined not to go down. And there's Allen Whitley to finally stop him, but he got enough for his first down out to the 23 yard line. Both receivers on the near side this time, four man front for the Indians. Here's Canty trying to go off left guard. He'll pick up a few, maybe three or four yards on that carry. That offensive line of Laney starting to come alive here. And you see Dustin Nobles, the one that made the tackle there. And again, more trouble for Canty in his shoes. You think you need another pair of shoes? He needs to get some, <laughs> he needs to get some tape on those bad boys. <laughs> Eight minutes to go in our ball game. Charlton County up 18 to 12. Failed at 12 8 at the half. Here's Danny again. Bad shoes and all, and he gets two yards. <laughs> Whitley there to stop him. But it's going to bring up another third down. Walker goes over to talk to his coach and get a play. Coach Eric Parker, 50 wins. Started out 0 and 17. After coming over from uh, Social Circle and uh, has done well since then. Since 2000, they put up a 10 and 2 season. They've been 47 and 16 since then. Third down and a long four to go for a first down. The Wildcats' high formation. Canny will not make it. He has stood up after a gain of one yard. Zao was in there. Nobles hit him as well. Great effort by that Charlton County defense just stuffing everybody right on the line of scrimmage. Big Justin Mincy got a hat in there as well. And so Laney's going to have to give the football up. Now Dunn is the punter so we know what he could do. We saw him fake it early in the first half. We got a first down. That was at midfield. Here they're at their own 31. LT Glover the deep back. Dunn thinks about it. No pressure. It's a pretty good kick. And fair catch made by Glover at his own 33. And earlier today, we got great coverage all weekend long. It was Clinch County, a winner over Lincoln County. 26 to 6, the final. There you see some hard fought points there as Clinch County gets into the end zone. And that was our single A game. Fullback Justin Ganey dragging Lincoln County defenders 10 yards for the score. Clinch moving on. They will play the title game in single A. Walker again with the carry for Charlton County. And he gets out to the 45 yard line. And that will be enough for an Indian first down. You know, this is just turning into what you call that that schoolyard fight right now. Who wants it bad enough on that offensive line? And guess who? Walker comes out of the pile somehow. Boy, I thought he was stopped at the 50. The next thing you know, he flies out for another seven or eight yards. First down, Indians at the 43 of Laney. You know, Walker would just cause you to be frustrated, and especially as a defensive lineman, the linebacker. You're doing everything you can to slow him down, and yet he's just got enough of a gap. He just get kept up those field. legs moving, and next thing you know, he's in the secondary. First down at the 43. High formation. Walker again. 
Cuts it back left side and he'll get another four or five maybe six yards. Tolbert the one that tackled him from behind. But this has been all the mule Walker here in the second half. They threw a pass early on in the third quarter got intercepted and they decided the ground game was the way to go and it has paved the way they've taken a lead here and they've got a, another drive rolling here at the 38 yard line second down and four to go Walker this time will not get back to the line of scrimmage Johnny Overstreet got him in the backfield and Corey Irvin helped him out and Irvin slow to get up but he'll be okay there you see 173 yards almost six yards of carry for Walker in that one touchdown. Williams splits top side third down they need four yards to keep the drive going. Hell the full back in front of Walker. Here goes Lemuel will get another four yards. He's right at where he needs to be for his first down. It depends on the spot Sapp and Urban combine to tackle him and a flag on the play as well. Once again you see it. Lemuel Walker just uh, just a hard nosed running back. I mean as a lineman you know you want to block for a guy like that. Because you realize, had he had another probably 60 or 70 pounds and was a couple of inches tall, he'd mm -hmm. be an offensive lineman. <laughs> Illegal motion on the offense, five yard penalty, replay, third down. So back him up. 34 carries, well, that one won't count, but 33 carries, that's a lot of hits. And Walker's taken today, and he's still going strong. But now they face the third down, they need nine to keep the drive alive. And now we got a timeout Laney not sure what they want to do on defense so they'll burn a timeout here with five minutes to play 456 to be exact. And if you're Laney you want to kind of get your, get your thoughts together here. And there you see coach Parker we talked to him earlier in the week. What he likes about coaching football. I just enjoy being around the kids. I really do. I just like the day to day interactions with them, uh, the game plan and the going on the road, the, com the competition, you know, and then having those kids come back uh, years later and just be around because they they really enjoyed their time with us. So that excites me. And, um, you know, like I say, we've got so many of our guys that came back this week obviously and I was just real excited for the kids that are here now. You know Coach Parker is just a guy that really enjoys coaching and he really loves being with these kids and he's got these kids believing in themselves man. If you've seen their program grow, grow over the last couple of years. Third down and now uh, nine now for Charlton County. Deep ball middle nobody's there incomplete. Contender receiver Harry Martin couldn't catch up to it. Got behind his defenders, but Dasher couldn't connect with him, so it will be a fourth down. And they'll have to punt the ball back. You see some pressure coming from Dunn on the outside there. And Dasher with that big arm, you know. And he said he can stand flat foot and throw it 60 yards, and he's let it go a couple of times today. That time just off the mark, and now Nobles will punt the ball again. And back deep is Dunn. Handy over there next to him. This one's going to go out of bounds at about the. We'll see where they mark it. It won't be inside the 20, that's for sure. Noble's just trying to keep it away from Dunn. He did just that. And the ball will be at the 23 yard line. You know, Noble's had a, his longest field um, punt ever was 61 yards. So he's got a. Cannon, but at the same time, you know, that ball hit the ground, it may roll and roll and roll. I can't take nothing away from him, okay? I hadn't seen him kick, but hey, on the sheet, 61 is the longest. It was a nice tight spiral for all we know. I figured it was. First down for Laney. They've got four minutes and 42 seconds to do something here. Down by six points, 18 to 12. They've seen their 12 8 lead turn into a six point deficit. 
Dominique Walker, once to go to the right side, he's got done. Dunn had a couple of blockers in front of him. Slips one tackle, but Zao was there to wrap him up after a gain of four yards. You know, David, that's exactly, you know, what Coach Parker was talking about, about this Charlton defense. You may not see them. You may think you've got to beat, but all of a sudden, you're going to have four or five black shirts show up out of nowhere. Great catch by Dunn, makes a move, and then all of a sudden, Zao. <laughs> Look at them. There they are, all five of them there to collar Dunn and keep him under wraps. He's got a touchdown today. And a couple of interceptions as well. So a big afternoon for Dunn, but his team down by six. Here comes the pressure. Set up a screen. Can he's got some room to operate. To the 40. Cuts it back to the middle. Needs a block at midfield. Gets it. Here he comes in the Charlton County territory. Now they surround him, and he'll get the most out of that. 40-yard line is where he's finally brought down. Huge play by Wayne Canty and the Laney offense. Coach Parker said Wayne Canty came in nine games into the season. Had he been here the whole year, would have been a, probably a 1,000 yards back. Sets up the screen, just does a lot of the work on his own. Dips, doodles, finds a little spot. Then he's like, oh, excuse me. Nope, going to go back the other way. That's just great running by Ken. Got a great block from Dunn at midfield. and got an extra 10 yards out of it. First down at the 39-yard line. Down by six. And the keeper and going nowhere is it Dominique Walker, Lambert, and Davis. Let's meet at the quarterback. That's what they did. So Davis will lose a couple of yards back to the 41. Just good quickness. Just reacting to the ball. Defensive players, that's all you got to do. You got to keep your eye on the ball. There's nowhere for Walker to go. Now three minutes to play. And Dominique gets his play from his coach. And he's ready to go. He sends Dunn and Sapp to the far side. And he's got Thomas underneath. Rolling to his right. Wants to throw, and he's hit before he gets it off. Able to throw it out of bounds, but Justin Mincy, the big man, drills him at the 50-yard line to disrupt that play. Dave, did you see Mincy close? I mean, he covered so much real estate so quick. Look on the replay. You're walking, you're running out, and all of a sudden, here he comes out of nowhere. Just tenacious. <laughs> Wayne Candy trying to block him had no chance. Mincy at 6'5, 265. A lot of Division I schools have their eye on him. Now it's third down and 12 from the 41 yard line. Walker going to call his own number. Breaks one tackle, but then he stopped well short of his first down by Dustin Nobles. That play picks up maybe five yards. And it will be fourth down. You see Walker calling his own play. And he is a threat on the ground. You definitely have to be aware of him at all times. He's an athlete, but couldn't get it done there. Now he's got a fourth, and they need seven to keep their hopes alive. Two minutes to play in this ball game. And the Wildcats trail it by six, 18 to 12. You can hear the fans going crazy here. The it's dunk. getting loud. Walker takes the snap. He's going to give it to Dunn. Shakes one tackle. Another still on his feet trying to stiff arm his way out of there, but he will not make it. Well short of his first down. They hold him up. Now late flags coming in. Just great defensive effort by that Charlton County D. Blubber and Boatwright. The two guys that finally tackled him. We'll see what the late flag is, but Dunn held to a gain of two. He needed seven. But you see what kind of ability he has to make people miss. Just not enough blockers. Too many black shirts there to avoid. Officials talking to both sides, and we're going to find out the call. They're going to mark it off against Laney. It's dead ball, unsportsmanlike against White, 15 yard penalty, first down. 
A little frustration coming out here. As Coach McWhorter's team stops Coach Parker's team short of the first down on a fourth down play. And there you see the penalties. Laney was six today. Cost him 36 yards. Ball all the way out to the 48 yard line. Walker. You can hear those pads popping as he picks up five yards. Israel McCain there to stop him. And now Laney's going to take a timeout. One minute, 33 seconds to go, possibly in their season. As they trail it by six, and they got to get the football back. Laney with just one timeout left. Carlton County's got all three of theirs. You know, Dave, I, I watched Peter Walker as he got up off the ground. I don't think this kid gets tired. His motor <laughs> has been running the whole time. And I'm talking about he's getting popped, but he's also delivering the blow. And as a defensive lineman and linebacker, you hate the idea of having a little back coming in and cause you problems. Hey, don't forget we got more football coming up. Washington County, the Golden Hawks at 11 and 2 versus the Purple Hurricanes of Cartersville at 9 and 4. That is our Triple A matchup right after this game. So stick around. High school football all the afternoon. The Quad A game has Warner Robins meeting Ware County. And that's a 6 o'clock kickoff. And then the late game in 5 8, Salem versus Statesboro. A couple of 13 and old squads going head to head here at the Dome tonight. After the timeout, second down. And Walker breaks through one tackle, but then they surround him. And he'll be held to a short game, give him two yards, and quickly the Wildcats call another timeout. You know, the good thing about it is, you know, you got all that great football action coming up today, but then again tomorrow, we got five more games mm -hmm. for you. I mean, you know, if you're still holding on to the turkey from yesterday, you got all day today to watch football, mm -hmm. then you got all day tomorrow, you know. You could be wiped out by Sunday. <laughs> Georgia Public Broadcasting 25 hours of high school football coverage between today and tomorrow. So if you don't get your fix then, then you, just, you can't be satisfied. You, you just can't be fixed. A double A game here going down the wire. Charlton County took the early lead 8 nothing, But then Laney answered with a couple of scores, took a 12-8 lead into the half. But in the second half, it's been all Lemuel Walker and the Charlton County Indians, 18 to 12 here, and they've just turned away Laney on a fourth down inside the 30-yard line, and they've got the football at the 45 of Laney, and the Wildcats are out of timeouts. Third down, three to go. Turn up, Walker. Diving toward the sticks. I don't know if he got there. Ran into the back of his tight end, Patrick Brooks. And it depends on where they marked his football. Looks like Brooks may be down. And of course, tomorrow we're back and uh, another double A matchup. The three time defending champ, Buford Wolves. Another great uh, squad for Dexter Wood. And uh, Roger Holmes is Dublin Fighting Irish will oppose them. And uh, that's who the winner of this game will face the winner of that game in the title game next week for double A. And that would be for uh, the state championship after this. You got that right. And there you see Patrick Brooks. As Walker just fell into the back of his legs Brooks trying to lead block on that play. Didn't get enough for the first down they mark him about a yard short. The clock will roll here with 110 and counting. Dasher under center. And Walker. Boy, they try to stretch him back. Let's we'll see where they mark it. I think his forward progress will be enough for the first down. Boatwright's the one that, or excuse me, Overstreet. Had him around the collar. And they're going to have to measure for this just to be sure. It's just shy of the 41 yard line. It's going to be close. Walker just takes it and just pounds it down there. You know, if he gets it, he's approaching 40 carries today. And it has been all him here in the second half. And his yards have not been easy yards. I mean, he has actually run just like a mm -hmm. big bruising fullback. Everything between the tackles, it seems. Here is the all important measurement. And that will be enough by the length of the football. 
And Charlton County should be able to wrap this thing up. Laney out of timeouts. And a first down for the Indians. And I'm sure Coach McWhorter told him just hold on to the ball. And sure enough, a couple of touches of the knee here by Dasher should wrap this thing up. And there's one of them. And there you see Coach McWhorter. 11 time region coach of the year all time winning his coach in Charlton County history and he's about to get number 161 here and play for another state title. Came into this game knew that he had a great opponent in this Laney ball club. And done in the Indians. Going for the second state title next second year. state title the one one. Back in 1999, and that will do it. They wrap up the semifinal victory here at the Dome and await the winner of the Buford Dublin game to be played tomorrow. Carlton County improves to 13 and 1 on the season. And Coach Eric Parker, another great run for his Laney Wildcats. They will finish the year at 10 and 4. Two great coaches right there. Coach McWhorter's team came in today. You know, Laney, they started out, they had, you know, little spurts. You could see some greatness coming, but never could quite put it together. Whereas Charlton County just kept pushing, kept pushing, kept mm -hmm. pushing. And their defense rarely played huge. And uh, the winning coach, Rich McWhorter, standing by with David Zelski. All right, congratulations, Coach. Uh, a little different mood from when I talked to you at halftime. Really was. You know, we uh, we put some stuff together. Second half, defense played awesome. Uh, offensive line, our offensive line is, has you know struggled off and on this year, and our offensive line really uh, played well. Lemuel ran the ball. Jerry Taylor really blocked great at fullback. Uh, it's, it's really kind of out of character for us. All year long, we just offensively we try to do whatever it takes to be successful. Uh, you know, we throw in the ball for over 2,200 yards this year. We came in here today and we had to run the ball to win. Uh, our kids will do whatever it takes to win. And uh, what a great group of great group of kids. All right, congratulations, Coach. Good luck. And, well, actually, one more question for you, Coach. Okay. Watching you last year, watching your team's passing attack, there, there was a playoff game. You didn't even pass, run the ball until the third quarter. Now it's, it has totally changed. Is Walker the cause of that? Well, yeah, some somewhat part of that. But the thing about it is, at Charlotte County High School, we're going to do what it takes. Whatever the kids can do, that's what we're going to do. We're going to adjust to the kids, and we're going to make sure we do everything that uh, we can to make sure they're successful. All right. Thanks again, Coach. Congratulations, and good luck against whoever it be. Thank you. All right. Back up to you guys. All right. Thanks, David. Thanks to Coach Rich McWhorter as his Charlton County Indians win it over Laney 18 to 12. Let's take a break. You're watching high school semifinal football here on Georgia Public Broadcasting. 